Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Dennis Duke Onyala. I'm super excited to be having your company. Today I am still talking to a gentleman. His name is Hamisi Semanda and his farm is called Hams Animal, Animal Breeders located here in Kayunga district. And today we want to talk about how to start. That question can never we can never end because every farmer that i meet has a specific set of things that they say that are quite different from every other okay so mr hamis welcome to my youtube channel so the question is how can somebody start up a good farm probably somebody watching us today has chosen has decided ah enough is, is enough i'm quitting my job or i'm even starting from wherever i have i am and i want to start uh, good farming where do they start from yeah all in all the beginning of your mind is supposed to be all about land the word land is a, a key is is very very important mm. uh, but people do a lot of mistakes and they think that uh, distance matters a lot mm. because you not do a uh, proper monitoring or something and you end up buying land close to the center of mm. town mm. because you you are minding about distance buy the land which is cheaper and you have bigger land than uh putting yourself close to, to the town center mm. you have a you squeeze yourself to the land because land limits you a lot actually in your information or for your information land is a vital key in this and business you're setting up a good farm if you have no land you cannot do anything mm. you can have the, the the feeds you can have the genetics but you cannot have the animals on top of those two. It is going to help you a lot when you're doing your business. Because land is going to determine these things. Mm. We have three systems of farming. One, we have uh, uh, zero grazing, that is intensive. Mm. We have semi-intensive and we have free range. So if your land is small, you're going to go into zero grazing. Because you plant the grasses and you give the animals, animals yes. part of the land plant the grass like the way i do me i'm only having 60 acres so um and i'm having bigger number of animals so that means i have to plant i supplement my animals so that i utilize the 60 that i have but also in um, in that small land but having very good nutrition and very good nice looking animals so for the free range those are the people that have square miles of land you will not need you will not mind about nutrition mm. unless your land does not have a lot of good grass that yeah. means there you'll be able to um plant and supplement your animals your, your just in case your animals are not giving you very good body score mm. so body score tells the kind of nutrition that you really have on your land okay. so basically the beginning is supposed to be land so i've got the land you've what got is? the land mm. what you're supposed to do is what is on that land how big is it and what is on that land if you have let's say bigger land you have uh, what they call um, um, uh, let's say a square mile let's count per acre give it 13 goats on free range an acre if you do zero grazing and you plant let's say uh, you're planting sugar grass sugar grass per acre can give you around 15 tons if it does an average if it does maximum, it can give you around 30 tons of feeds. So that means an acre maximum can feed around uh, 50 goats. But if your land is so nice, it can go up to 100. Depends on the outstand that you're getting from there. Mm. So if you get more tonnage, you can increase the number of animals. Mm. So on average, let's say an acre can feed over 50 animals. If you're doing semi-intensive, go feed, then come back and then supplement, you can do around 25 animals per acre. And we said on free range, you do 13 goats or 10 goats per acre. Okay. So when you're thinking about of starting, think about of the land. Mm. After thinking about of the land, it will determine your system mm. of farming. Mm. After determining the system of farming, it will give you what to do. Either plant grass or do free range. Then what do you do next? Basics that people Ignore. Look, ignore. Mm. Having a toilet on your farm. Mm. Having accommodation for your workers. And, and then for you yourself in case you want to sleep around. And you yourself. Because what people, the mistakes that people do is being visitors on their farms. Somebody comes on the farm, 
He does not even have a toilet to go on. How do you concentrate and ask for what was done yesterday? How do you monitor mm -hmm. if you're uncomfortable because you don't have anywhere to go? Then three, um, people don't have where they can sleep. I'm advising you, even if your farm is very bad and you really have a very poor car house, you get it? Sleep there because it's what you have. It is your farm. Have where to stay on your farm in whichever condition. Okay. So that means land, land. Um, look at look at uh, toilet and facilities and facilities and, and where somebody to sleep. Yes. Mm. So for the pasture management and so on, it will be dependent on how big the land is. Okay. That's it. Perfect. So if you're on a small piece of land, it means the next thing is to plant the grass, the grass, so that Just you prepare about. before you bring in the goats. I've yeah. always had uh, farmers say that one of their biggest mistake was to stock the goats before stocking the feed. The, the concept, mm. I want you to understand the concept of farming. Mm. Um, I have told you that the whole game starts with pastures. And the people who say that they have never eaten grass, I just laugh at you. Because it is the animals to harvest the grass convert it into muscles, mm. then you get the meat or you get the dollars. So the whole process starts with grass. Mm. If you don't start with grass, what are you going to convert? These animals are just our converters that converts grass into muscles for us to make the money. Mm. So if you have no grass, then I don't understand why you have even to buy the animals mm. because you're not going to manage. And that's one of the reasons if the guys don't also have very good nutrition, you might have grasses, but less nutritious. The animal will not convert it and you'll get stuck on the way. So what you need to start is uh, a hybrid. Me, I always emphasize to start with hybrids. But if you can't afford hybrids and you start with locals, it is also okay. a start. Mm. But the only thing is that if you start with locals, you have to be very patient. You have to wait. For some time. For some time to get the results. Mm. If you start in a highway or using the hybrids, you are on the right track because you're not going to take long to get the money. Actually, the sense of starting with hybrids vis-a-vis -vis local, local you're paying more time and hybrids you start on time. So those are the two things. So when a person is thinking about of starting of goat farming, think about all that thing okay. and also think about of water. Water harvest, either you do ground or you harvest water. But the moment, if you have no ground water, if you have no lake with you, if you have no dam with you, harvest the water from your houses. The moment you put up the houses, just know you're going to put also the water harvesting system. Talking about water, yes. how important is it? You cannot do anything without water. Because even in digestion of animals, if they're not taking a lot of water, your animals will never attain weight. Why? Because they do less digestion, less conversion. So in things that you don't have to think to, 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 to play with, don't play with water, don't play with feeds. Those are main things. Mostly water. Without water, don't think about of doing good farming. Okay. So after somebody has stalked, what next? After stocking the animals, mm. then the management. The management is all about you. Uh, how do you approach your workers? How do you work with your workers? How do you manage everything? Then there, we look at what they call disease management and, you know, the routines mm. that we have talked about. Okay. Yeah. So what, has, what are the commonest illnesses that you've faced at your farm? Uh, the most common diseases that really affects us, uh, those are the... That's hot water, what because hot, hot water, water mm. doesn't have, uh, a, 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 you know, a vaccine as per now. Mm. It's a heart bone disease. Sorry, it's a, um, water it's a it's, no, 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 it's a tick bone disease. Okay. It's always attacks us. Uh, it, actually, it's carried mm. by uh, ticks. It's the ticks that really causes that kind of disease. Okay. That disease, it's a disease that really comes and attack an animal. Looks to be healthy as per now. But in the evening, it comes back, collapses, and dies. Because it always accumulates a lot of water in the heart. And that animal fails, uh, sorry, the heart fails to pump the blood. Mm. Because the muscles of the heart have really uh, uh, weakened. So, 
that is one of the diseases that really affects, affects us. You. And may I always call it um, a lemonese disease because it is preventable unless if the drugs or the acaricides have failed to become work. Uh, yeah, because resistant. Because the ticks become resistant. To uh -huh, the, the ticks become resistant today. But if you, the moment you sense that, change you the drug, change the drug immediately. Drug. Okay. And then these other diseases are vaccinatable. Have a chart of vaccinating all your animals. The moment you have that, actually, after stocking the animals, mm. now you need to go through the processes of really managing the animals. The process of managing the animals, those are the basics of vaccination, mm -hmm. the bas basics of deworming, basics of uh, spraying, and then managing the kids, because kids are the dollars. Yeah, the kids the are the end profits. point <laughs> is the profit. <laughs> exactly. So, and some people less care about kids, mm. not knowing that that's the reason why you bought land, why you planted pastures, why you introduced the animals, why you drive your car to the farm. So me, I don't play with kids. Is, got, is natural synchronization the same as got multiplication? multiplication? Natural synchronization, got multiplication, no. They're multiplication different. is the rate of production. Mm -hmm. How do I ensure that I get the best rate of production? It's by giving a good ratio of males to females. If you feel that you can afford to have three males in 100, good and well. If you're feeding your animals very well, like the way you have seen my pewers being fed very well, mm. they can serve a lot. I overworked them, they lost weight, I put them back to zero grazing. Mm. Then they attain, they <clears throat> go and then elapse more. So the moment you do that, you're really helping even the sperm to be very active. Okay. Because you're feeding them well, you're giving them time to rest and then extra feed the animals, they gain more weight, then you give them more other females. So what is the, um, the advised ratio of male to female? Yeah, for a savannas, give 50 females to one male for three months. And actually, it's a very small number. Reason being, if you count three months, that's around 90 days. If we give uh, an animal um, 50 animals in three months, that means a, an animal is going to serve 1.8 females. That's almost two females per day. day. Even you human beings, you even serve more than uh, uh, three women in a day. Mm. How about an animal? It's very possible. So... That's it. That's how we, we can gauge it. So by the end of the three months, all the 50 animals will be pregnant. We'll be giving you kids in a period of three months as well, uh, again, mm. because they also deliver in a period of three months as well. Okay. Yes. Also, oh, that's how, uh, so the ratio is, for One, the savannah, you talked yeah. about the savannah. What about yeah, the boa? Boa is around 50. Uh, sorry, it's around 40, 32, mm. 40. So you mean boas are not as active as savannahs? Yeah, yeah. And then the locals? The locals can do 50, even 60. Wow. They are very active, okay. very aggressive. Okay. Yes. So you talked about um, what are the different exotic breeds? We only know of savanna, red karahari, and then the boas. Is that all no, no, no. in the exotic space? Uh, we do have many more other breeds. We have uh, Angola. Mm -hmm. We have um, Sane and Togenbergs. We have Alpine. But some uh, dairy animals. Mm. So alpine is a dairy, uh, togenbach is a dairy, sanen is a dairy, um, angola is also dairy, anglonubian is a duo. Yes, anglonubian, yes. Yeah. So boas, savannas, but me basically I'm doing three. I'm doing savanna, I'm doing boa, and kalahari. Though there is uh, some animals uh, that I would like maybe to go into them. Uh, some people left us behind. Somebody builds up his breed and names it his mm, name. Mm. I saw Aisha, I saw Honamli, you know, there are many animals okay. that are there. But basically what we know, those are the three. Why breeds. didn't you choose to do dairy farming? Isn't it as profitable as this one? Dairy farming is hectic. Duke, oh. you complained about the distance. Mm. Just imagine if I'm picking milk from here to go to Kampala. Mm. People in, uh, in my town, they don't understand goat's milk. I will need to take a task to, uh, to uh, make them, them understand mm. that goat's milk is really good and very, very good. The important. best milk on the market. Yes. Mm. So that is also another task. Two, I don't want projects that gives me a lot of headache. You have to monitor the milking of the animals. 
you have to monitor the nutrition and the diet and the diet <laughs> then you have to carry that milk mm -hmm. how do you preserve it before it gets spoiled you have to look at the value addition because value addition when you're doing dairy goods it's, it's very vital needed, yes because you i mean do it. the milk won't all be taken in a day what do yes. you do with it uh -huh. mm -hmm. so you, that means you have There's to think lot. about of that mm -hmm. so actually people who does dairy they invest a lot a lot of time mm -hmm. and a lot, a lot of, of money, money mm -hmm. and a lot of patience wow. and they have a lot of hectic work so me, I miss, I'm a poor man. I want to starve with my poverty, but I don't want even other things that are really making my mind unsettled. Mm. Um, somewhere, somebody's telling me the milk is spoiled. Um, somewhere, somebody's telling me the milk didn't come out well. Mm. So if you want to be in peace, please do a project that can stand on its own, whether you're there or not. Let it work for yourself. Me, I evaluate myself mm. after six months. If I produce, let's say, 400 kids now. I need to have my money after six months. I'm sure that I can get maybe 200 million. Wow. Yes. Interesting. I hope you're picking a leaf from today's discussion. Did we talk about the nutrition uh, yeah. aspect of it? Uh, did you talk about the different grasses? Different grasses, maybe I can just give Break you a brief. Enough. Yeah. Uh, me here, because mm. I always want to teach people what I do. What you do? I do a sugar grace. I do alfalfa. Alfalfa is a protein, mm. sugar grace is a protein and carbohydrates. Okay. And in the makeup of the muscle, we need, need carbohydrates and we need a protein. Mm. So it's a complete thing. They go feed in the ground. I don't know what they feed on. When they come back, I supplement them with that, what I'm sure of. Mm. And I feed them in the format of silo. Okay. You get it? Like silage. silage. Mm. And I store it in the format of hay mm. and a crushed grass. Okay. So I crush in a powder. I do bells, which is hair bells, and then I also do the silage. Okay. So when I'm feeding them, I feed them in that way. I want you to talk to somebody. It could be a lady, a gentleman, a young man, or an older person who has been there holding back to start. Like they want to start, but they're second guessing, second thinking. I want you to speak to them in a minute. Someone who has some little capital. Mm. But they are and fearing still to start. hesitant mm. to begin. Don't be too late. Me, I retired when I was 31 years. I'm surviving. Not even surviving. I have started living. You get? Mm. Because where I am, I'm not badly off, but I'm not well off, depending on people who are well off. If I would uh, started earlier, mm -hmm. I think I would be You'd somewhere. You'd be very, very far. Right now, um, I mean, 35 years, mm. but my target, I want to make uh, 40 years with at least 6,000 animals, hybrid 6,000. And that will make me a good use to have 6,000 animals. Mm. They are worth around 4 billions or 5 billions. Mm. So don't be late to start. Start small in whatever you can afford. Get the land. Start what I've told you, pastures and so on, construction. Start with a smaller number of animals that you can afford. As long as they are very good breed. That's what I can tell you. Don't fear to start. Okay. Never and never lag behind to start. I'm telling you the truth. You have a job today. Tomorrow you might not have a job. Mm. And for your information, many people are graduating. And there is nowhere that we are going to accommodate them. Unless you and me and him, we are going to make our project successful and we, accum sorry, we accumulate jobs and then we harvest our friends, they come and work with us. Okay. Yes. How do you manage the goats or the farm, the goat farm? Yeah, a actually, you, 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 you're talking about my farm being big, but it's not big because 60 acres are just mine. Okay. There is some people here you see because mm. now you're in this business. People have over six square miles. Mm. Others have 12 square miles. Mm. So this is a cast small farm. But <laughs> <laughs> 60 acres to him is yeah. very small. It's Ladies and gentlemen, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. It's a good it's conversation. A, it's, a, it's a small farm. Mm. Uh, when uh, he says small, it looks like 
it means he has bigger dreams yeah. of owning quite yeah, those yeah. square miles you're talking if, about. If somebody could offer me a square mile, mm, I'd be say I'm somewhere. Uh -huh. Because the people I see who have square miles of land mm. are really also farmers, you okay. get. Mm. But the same way, if we talk about management, mm. um, I have here and I have my extra other three farms, small mm. farms, mm. which have around 400, 300 goats. But here there are many, you get. And uh, it's this the biggest farm, let's say, for myself. It's mm. the biggest. Okay. The rest are just small farms. Mm. But, Supportive farms. Uh -huh. But the way I manage this, and actually people, I would like people to understand this very, very well. Uh, it's one of the challenges that have, uh, have really made people hate farming uh, because management really becomes a problem to them. Uh, yesterday on my YouTube channel, I was talking about what are the failures of farmers in goat farming and what are the causes. Actually, one of the causes of that, one is management because we have what they call the pillars of a successful goat farmer. Those pillars contains management. It's called M plus N plus G equals to success. M stands for management, mm. N stands for nutrition, and G stands for genetics. So if you miss either of that, you cannot be successful. So either way, when you plus each of those, goes on to the success. Uh, the success. Mm. Uh, but most of the people are looking at that as a minor thing. But one of the things that manages all that is called management. Because even if you have very good nutrition, if you have very good genetics, and your management is very poor, you can never have the results. But one of the things that really causes trouble in this business is you, Duke yourself, and your viewers, <coughs> which are called the CEOs, or the directors, or the investors. Mm. Your approach towards your workers makes you fail. How? Because people think that if you have the money, you have everything. That is not the case with this farming. Just imagine somebody, you've seen some of my flocks. I have a, a flock which has over 300 savannas, and most of them are pures. When I talk about pures, I'm talking about 2.5 million. So somebody you call a worker is managing over your 400 millions. That is not a worker. That is a partner. First of all, we have to change our mentality from mm. being managers or from and being bosses. and bosses mm. into partnership. Because how I do this, because most of the people that have failed in this country, they are really mismanaging the workers. I'm not saying that workers are good. Most of the workers are not good. Because now when you go into this business, you're dealing with illiterate people. Mm. But those are the people that can affordably handle your condition. Mm. You get it? Yeah. So if you're dealing with illiterate people, learn how to deal with them. It is very hard to deal with them because you're not on the same level of understanding. You have different levels of understanding. Of understanding. True. You get it? Mm. So <clears throat> if you're handling these people, this is my approach. Me, I don't own workers. I own partners. Why? Because they're handling my money. All the assets, all the money I have, the so-called money I have, this is my biggest project that has a lot of money. You get it? Mm. So I have to pay more attention to it. I have to give it more time. And I have to handle those people who are handling my project time and respect. True. So what do I do? like for me because mm. more people have really failed in this business why because workers have uh, uh really they're turned them down them they're, they're cheating stolen. them they have stolen mm. they don't do what they tell them they don't do what they say you get they fight they minimize me the way i'm handling these people i manage one person the manager he's answerable to the rest of the people and he also manages his people because they are not my level, but I can be their friend. So here at HAM, I'm mm. a friend to the workers mm. or to the partners. But the manager, it is our boss. He is our boss. 
he pays us, me mm. I don't pay salary here. Mm -hmm. He only gives me the bill and then I give him the money. And then he sorts himself. Then he sorts his, his people. people. Mm. Because it is his people. They are not my people. Actually, some of my workers, I don't even know their names, but I know their faces. I can find him one time, one day, when he has changed even the group. And we have a new group, I can just consult him what happened. Mm. Me, I only put him on the pin and I ask him a lot of questions. He's answerable to whatever happens on my farm. Mm. So he's the manager. The manager manages people. What do I do? Me, I let those workers be my friends. How? I go visit their houses. If I find someone having really very good animals, it doesn't cost me to give him a hundred thousand apart from his salary. salary. So that means I'm making him my friend. I'm giving him an advance on top of the services that I give them extra. For your information, you people, if you want to make your workers comfortable, give what you can afford. Just imagine if my worker is handling, let's say, 200 goats, and each goat is 500,000. So he's a manager of 50 million. What do you think if I could maybe spend over 300 on him? It is a very cheap labor if you give him 300,000. Mm -hmm. And you're not giving it to him as in bulk. You're costing the, uh, the, 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 the medical, mm. you're costing the meal, the overall, the gumboots. What does it cost you if you find that person really doing well and you give him some extra money, mm. like 100,000, you know, like 50,000? That is enough for him to be happy. Mm. You, you get be it? motivating them. So be my work as me here is to motivate those people. Every Saturday I have my fireplace here. I think Dennis will show it to you. Mm. We come up together. We have a gathered event of roasting our animals. We dance. Even me, I'm not a boss when I come here on Saturday. I'm a, a partner. So we dance together. We have fun together. Monday is serious business. It's only the manager that is supposed to control those people. So the moment you do that, I'm telling you, I do not say that all workers will be good. Some workers will not be good. True. So, some others misbehave. Some others are thieves. Some others abuse others. Some others mistreat others that you cannot even manage to handle. What you do will be good. If he's good, you stay with him. If he does not adjust to what you want, you mm. let him go. Mm. And let me tell you one thing. Me, what I do, I do my recording. I do records. I have record books where I register my animals. I have tags. That also, also indicates the number of animals that I have. Once in a while, I jump in and I do census. But even if somebody steals 10 animals, when I have a thousand, that is minor. I look at it as a minor thing than losing him. You get it? Mm. Because I might have someone else that might steal even more. Mm. So we need to learn how to do the adjustments for that okay. case. You've talked about handling workers and all that. So let's go into the other... Uh, uh, how to manage a big farm is that all or how do, do you wake up every morning take stock you're talking about the routine mm. those are called the daily routines mm -hmm. the daily routines are managed by the manager actually every work knows what to do when mm. because most of the time you know some people are told that you build raise the houses and so on but me i'm a poor man i can't afford to do a raise the house because I can't spend over 50 millions or 30 doing a raised house. So my houses are all ground houses. I think you have seen them. Mm -hmm. And two, um, they know. Not every day that we have to sweep, no. We do bigger exercising yards. Such that an animal have a bigger space mm -hmm. to stay in and drop the droppings or the dung all over. So by the time that dung gets much, that is in like two, three days, that's when the guys sweep. So these guys know we have a quarantine area mm. on our farm mm. whereby all the sick are shifted to that area because we have many animals. If you leave ten, uh, two sick in this flock, then three sick in the other flock, you will not manage to monitor all of them because they graze from different areas. Mm. So we collect all of them, put them together so that the person who is handling treatment and actually all my workers I have taught them how to do simple treatments because... I cannot manage to be, you know, coming in to treat or getting a vet to treat in those simple, simple diseases that we can 
handle, handle. by ourselves. Mm. So we put all the animals in one quarantine area. Say that a person <coughs> treating the animals, mm. if there is a worker interested in learning how to do treatment, they wake up, get the kit, go to that unit where there is sick animals. Mm. Then the owners of the flocks do the observation. In case there is any that has gotten sick, maybe between today and tomorrow, it's also shifted to, to that unit. Mm. So we, we try always to eliminate sick ones in the, in the, in the healthy the health animals. Ones, yes. yes, so it even gives us simple, simple approach to attend to the animals. And those ones in the flock, in the sick bay, they are not allowed to go to feed. We always bring the feed. Mm. So that's where we always talk about the nutrition. But in the management, that's how we do. So every week, every day, people wake up to check out for a sick before they go to, the far, to, to graze. Then after checking out for a sick, they also go to their flocks and make sure there is water. Mm. Because water is supplied every day. And me, what I did, I made a well, put their submissive pump, it pumps water and goes direct to the to flocks. flocks yes. I think you have seen that. Seen that, that simplifies their work. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they have only to do is to go and clean. They go, clean the flock, then, uh, sorry, clean the, the, the troughs so that those animals can really have clean water. Then other work, daily, day-to-day -day, uh, uh, routine they do, we have kids. Like for me, Duke, what I do, I do natural synchronization. Mm. I remove the males, put them alone. I think you have seen the flock of the males. Mm. And um, I let the females starve. So when I reintroduce the male, they, that male has that hormone called testosterone. It smells for them. When it smells for the females, they understand that the guy is in. Their body starts to stimulate the hormones. So in the period of three months, they will all be on heat and they will all be served. So that means we are handling kids. We are receiving kids in a period of three months. So the period of receiving kids, that's when the, 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 the flock owner will always be going in the morning to release the kids from the kids' pen to give them to the, to the mothers so that they can suckle. Mm. And when um, the three months elapses and all the kids are now grown up, he doesn't need to separate them. But in the night, Actually, like after um, after seven, the go guys go back. The flock owners go back, pick the kids, then put them in the kids' pen. So those are the day-to-day -day routines that these guys do: treatment, watering, then separation of kids, and then put them back. Okay. That's what we do day-to-day. -day. On a weekly basis, we do the spraying. So there, myself, I also come because I enjoy doing it. When I come here and my health is okay. I also do it myself. Those who follow my YouTube channel, they always see Hamisi doing the spraying himself. Mm. One guy said, came here and said, Hamis, you even do the guy's work. Mm. Uh, why are you doing the guy's you work? Leave I them said to do it by themselves. Yeah, yeah. So I said, this is my money and this is my farm. Mm. If I don't get involved, what do I do? We pay money to go to the gym. Why don't I lift a, a sprayer on my back? And be doing exercise for free. You, you get it? <laughs> yes. So we spend money mm. in unnecessary places. But where relevance takes place, we don't want to get involved. Mm. So that's what we do. Like weekly basis, that's what we do. Mm. We spray every week on Sunday. I decided Sunday because Saturday is my day to inspect whatever they have done in the week. Sunday is the day that I meet my people. I want people to come to my farm see what I do, not to tell them stories. I want them to come, see how we do all that spraying and so on. Mm. Then um, I think those are the routines that we always do on a weekly basis. Including record keeping as well? Record keeping is always done um, when the kids are born. Oh, okay. we, when the kid is born today, we wait, then we record the mother's uh, tag number or name, and then we also record the father's name or tag number. I will show you the records there mm -hmm. and you, you show to these people. Then, um, after that period, I can decide to say that this week we are going to do census. We go and uh, um, um, count. We do a head count. Mm -hmm. Actually, counting goats is really very easy. Okay. It's controllable. You just put them in one corner, then you count, you count one, one by one. By one. Okay. So, those are the routines okay. that we always do. Okay. You get. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, when I talk about also the management, like my farms, 
me, I do not allow or I don't wait for an animal to get sick and I think about of the vaccination. Mm. That's why even diseases do not attack me so much as other farms and other people. And me, I don't lose kids like the way Whatever. other people are losing. Mm. If it comes, I find a solution earlier. Mm. Because uh, uh, I vaccinate like seven diseases in a year. I make sure that whichever animal I have at my farm, I have to vaccinate it promptly. Have to, yes. Okay. Every year, it's supposed to have around seven vaccines and i'm sure that is what i can handle so those are the routines let's make business sense out of it is it a viable business that i can actually uh, invest my money in and we're actually going to make a few calculations just to show you if it is viable or if it's not i would really advise people to go into this it is the business that can make you rich in a shorter period of time it is a business that can make you really feel at peace when you're doing your business mm -hmm. because there is a lot of things that we are looking at when we are doing goat farming or when we are doing farming you have to look at the project that makes you comfortable you have to look at the business that doesn't make pressure on you mm -hmm. i don't know about goats uh, sorry rabbits of the if they also give you pressure mm -hmm. because in terms of feeding you know, you have to buy feeds, you have to buy what, like the chicken people, like the piggery. Sure. Yeah. Uh, people always need to feed those animals on your feed. Mm. It is not the case like our case. If you have land, you don't need to invest in, uh, in the nutrition, like maybe feeding your animals so much. Unless if your land, the land you have is in a bad uh, area, whereby uh, the pastures which are there are not uh, nutritious, or the pastures that you have there are not um, very good, there you will need to plant some pastures to supplement. If you have bigger land, you don't need to plant. Or you can only have some pastures for supplementary. But for rats who are doing maybe semi-intensive, it's just a matter of planting your grasses, then you keep harvesting and you give to your animals. So it is a viable project in which way? Because when you look at the growth rate of an animal, I think Dense Duke will show you my animals. They weigh up mm. to 120 kgs. They're already seeing them on the screen. Yes. So you're, you're, they are weighing over 120 kgs live weight. So if a goat of a year is weighing 120 or two years, how do you tell me that it's not viable? Because we have um, three markets right now. And uh, me, I want to tap all of them. One is a breeding market. Two is a slaughter market. Three is this uh, uh, restaurant. It's, it's also another business. Slaughter, I mean when you sell to people who are going to slaughter, like the abattoir guys. Um, food business is when Hamis is having a grill and he is slaughtering for himself. Those are three businesses. Mm. But <coughs> all in all, what affects our business is the word management as the way I have talked about. Management, nutrition, and genetics. We might have animals which are not growing faster, but you have a good management and you have a very good feed. You might have a good manager and um, 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 good genetics, but nutrition is bad. You're not going to make business. But this business is very good if you do all that in court like doing good management, doing good feeding, like uh, um, um, go having good genetics, things move properly. Me, I will say at my end, it is properly done because I follow the procedures. These diseases that comes in and disorganize people, it's because those people don't follow the procedures of vaccination and then management. Mm. But the moment you do all that, this is a business that gives you money that you can't even believe. Just take an example. Mm. If I buy an animal, uh, a male goat at three million, mm. then I give it 50 females. Um, when I buy a, an animal today and uh, I take it to my farm, I advise you to take it to the quarantine. If you take it to the quarantine for two months to get used to the environment, then supplement it with some um, uh, vitamins, for better metabolism and getting adapted to the environment you also provide some antibiotics for that case after that period they are bred by the male that you bought three millions 
let's say or even bought females at 500,000. Mm. So that's around 28 million. If you look at uh, these other costs like housing and so on, let's say you have invested 30 million. millions. Mm. Then um, those animals are bred. The gestation period of this animal is five months mm. and you produce the first lot. That means you're going to produce kids which are around 87. Their growth rate is high. You From get how many uh, females? 50 females. Oh, 50, yes. So you're getting over 70 or 50 mm. kids, mm. which are 87. When we look at the business of breeding, each goat you're producing there is going to be 500,000 or 400, let me say. You get it? Mm. So you do the 50 goats times 500,000. You get mm. that's money that you can get but remember if a goat produces today after 18 to 21 days if all condition is good feeding management and good genetics mm. it is going to be bred after 18 to 21 days if maximum it has prolonged the second month it will come on heat that means in 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 the in the, in the period of 12 months you're receiving two babies but the first baby, by, by the time you receive a second, second baby, baby, this one will be almost uh, yeah. ready. Mm. Yeah, it will be. It will be around seven, or rather around seven, seven, or eight, seven months or eight. Mm. So that means it's good to be sold. Mm. If you're selling on the market of breeding, just know that you have gotten 50 kids or 70 kids and they are ready to be sold at the end of the year at 500,000 or 800,000. Mm. Let's say 500,000 because we bought the mothers at 500,000. So that means you already have your 20 five Million. millions mm. you get it mm. but remember you you're going to produce the aha the, the, the you have the initial there. stock mm. and you have another new group that group you have that produced coming which is also another 50. Mm. so by the time you produce a third group mm. if you didn't sell the, the female mm. and the you only ones, sold yes the males yes it means will also be breeding them and at then the same time and yes. then so forth and so uh -huh. forth and so, so on instead of producing 50 for the third time mm. you also let's say if the first production 50 were fem uh, sorry 25 half were 25 females, females mm, 25, 25 males, males that means you have 25 also to be bred at the third time mm. and produce with the mother so instead of receiving 20 50, 50 kids you receive probably like 75, 75. so you get wow. it mm. so if you want to dispose you have 75 on board mm. so that is how the business makes sense oh. so if you if you take those rounds like for two years out of the 50 goats so instead, you might be even having over 300 kids to sell. Mm. And if you sell it at 500,000, that's 150 million. Isn't that a viable business? I would like Mr. Joke to tell me definitely. that if I invest 30 million, mm. in two years I get over 150 million, when even I still have my stock that I still, bought 28 million, mm. which kind of other business would I go for? Definitely no one. So that is one market of breeding. And the market of breeding is still standing. Why? We are many. If you call goat farmers in the country, very many will come. Even those that have 50. Even those that have 10. Because they are farmers and they are dealing in goat farming. Mm. But actually, me on my side, I might not consider them to be a very good goat farmers. Why? And I also don't consider myself being a goat farmer. Because I belong to the Pearl of Africa, the country that produces grass mm. as frequent as possible. But we don't utilize it. The smallest farmer in my country would at least have over 6,000 goats. And that is my dream. If I could make 6,000 goats, that is over 4 billions in my stock. Just imagine, Duke, if I have my goats, which are worth 4 billions, mm. reproducing every after five months. Do you know how rich I'm, I would be? Wow. So, in actual sense, it is a business that we would go into. But we are very many in the country, but we're having very small number of animals. That's why when I was giving you an average number, I told you 50. This business runs with numbers. Because a person handling 50 goats is the same person that you're using to handle your 10 goats. And you're paying him, and you're paying him the yeah. equal amount of money. Mm. And you're even paying him the equal amount of portion and mm. beans. True. So, in actual sense, I want people to understand that this is a viable project that people are minimizing. The only problem we have is that uh, some people have not understood that uh, this is a really viable project. And some of people that have gotten money out of it, 
they don't mention. They, they keep quiet. Keep quiet, yeah, true. You get it? Mm. That's why we are not accumulating a lot of animals. And most of the farmers that have maybe 200 goats, maybe uh, 300, most of them are locals. If you have a local, mm. to get your profit out of a local, you need over three and a half years to have a 75 out of a pure local hybrid, uh, sorry, Mubende, and a pure hybrid savanna or boa. To bring out a 75 fully grown, you need over three and a half years or two and a half years. Oh, serious rotation. You get it. Mm. Because you have to do a lot of breeding. So most of us, I will not put myself out, most of us have local goats. Mm. And you know what? We are starving for the 3.5 years for a goat to be paid 150,000 shillings. Wow. What do I mean? The, the market we have for breeding, it is still rampant. So we need more people to do breeding. After all, almost all of us getting uh, into breeding, then we are going to look at another market called slaughter market. Mm. The slaughter market, I'll give you a debrief. Just a simple briefing about it. You very well know the places that sells goat's meat mm. in the country. Mm. Uh, the most dominant known um, is place Kumb is Kombozi, mm. Gaza Road. Mm. They give you a piece at 5,000. So three pieces makes a quarter. You are not aware that you're eating a quarter at 15,000 US, uh, sorry, 15,000 Uganda shilling. The dollar rate is at 3,600 uh, right now, somewhere there, if, in case you want to change and get to know it in your currency. Please try and do that. Mm. They are eating that at that much, 15,000. Mm. So that means you're eating a kilo at 60,000. You get it? So that is how far the slaughter market is. You get it? Mm. What do I do? If those animals, the ones that we have produced, let's say 50 goats in two years, we are having over 150 or 200 goats out of the 50 mm. in two years. And we are selling them, let's say, at these people who just, just buy and take. Mm. Uh, they depend on the weight. If my animal of two years, I think you have seen them mm, uh, really in my heavy. video, the, those of four years, they are worth 20 kilos. So that means if we slaughter them, they can give me 10 kilos. So if I sell my goats at eight months and they have around 50 kilos or 40 kilos, they are giving me meat 20 kilos. So somebody can't fail to give me 200,000. Let's just imagine we have uh, started with 25 or 30 millions and we have offsprings of over 300 goats in two years, and we are selling each at 200,000. Isn't that over 60 million? Mm, true. You get it? Mm. So the 38 million is giving me 60, the 30 million is giving me 60 million in two and a half years. Divide that by the number of months, months. which are 24, and know how much money you You'll are getting. Remember, we have not sold the old stock. We are only selling what we have produced. Mm. Isn't that a viable project? Definitely it is. You get it? Mm. Then there is a market mm. that Hamis is going into. I have built my, my cafe. Uh, I've built a garden. Okay. And um, I'm doing, uh, there is a garden, there is a cafe, but my main aim is a grill. Where uh, people can go. Where people can go. Mm. If you want to have a blast of goat's meat, mm. that's where you have to go. You will see meat in all kind of feeding, mm. sorry, in all kind of cooking. Me, my aim now is aiming to employ, I've employed many illiterate people. Mm. I've employed the literate people. I'm now going to employ the chefs and those beautiful girls that are really going to serve my people. So at my garden, this is my take. Mm. Uh, Duke have showed you uh, the unit where I'm going to put my feedlot mm. for goats. I win my animals at three months. Then after winning them at three months, I'm going to feed lot to them for three months so that they can attain up to 60 kilos. If they do 60 kilos, meat I might have around 30. Or let me say I'm getting 20 kilos out of them. I'm going to put all kind of making. They will do whole meat. They will do ribs. They will do deep fried. They will do choma and everything. We serve you a quarter in all kind of med at 10,000. 
That means I'm going to be selling my kilo at 40,000. If my goat is 20 kilos, that is 800,000. If I sell only one goat per day. That means if I sell two goats, that would be around 1.6. But let me say I'm selling one and I'm getting 800,000 and I'm giving out 200,000 to my workers. So I'll be staying with 600,000. So 600,000 times a month, which is 30 days, mm. I'll be getting 18 million. If I slaughter two goats in a month, that will be 36 million. I do not to be an, M an MP. Be taking me dancing for people. Hey. Well, you know, people coming at my gate all the time mm. because I'm their member of parliament. I don't need to be that. I'll be making my money mm. directly from my place. I connect my farm from my farm to the slaughter abattoir to the plates. That is the value addition that we I'm going to do. About. So I have showed you the three markets mm. that are readily available. Sure. And you can able to do it. Okay. Just imagine Duke. You don't need to have a respect without money. You can put an outlet on the road mm. and say, I'm doing Duke meat. You get it? Mm. And then you slaughter your goat, you roast it and give to people. True. And they will definitely uh, buy it. From there, you'll be in a month, you're getting your 18 millions. Your 18 millions, you can buy a suit of 1 million. Uh, if you're out of your outlet, you go back and chill. Somebody says the guy is wearing mm. a suit of, of 1, 1 million, million. and a shoe of 1 million. Mm. Is he a minister? Definitely of course, no. no. You're a farmer. You're a farmer. Mm. You drive a car of 200 million. That will be something very, very simple. Okay. So goats can really make money. And what I want these people to know, there is a lot of opportunities that we have not tapped mm. in goat's meat. Because me here, people come and buy my dung mm. at 500,000 a truck. And per week, I can put out around five trucks. That's also another money that we don't look at. Mm. You get it? Mm. So I even get my dung and put it in the grass. The grass is fertilized and grow at a high rate. I and bring it, crush it, then I give it to the animals. So I'm doing the or recycling. Or even if you have excessive, you, you sell it I to sell. people. Mm. Yeah, I sell. Because the garden can't finish all that. Mm. I have many animals that drops all the time. Even by the time we are talking right now, guys are really dropping dollars for, for Hamis. Mm. And some other thing I want you to understand is that we have not talked about... Actually, let me tell you one thing. On the money I'm talking about, I've not talked about the skin. I've not talked about the horns. Mm. I've not talked about the, the, the mandibles the or even the teeth. Mm. The bones, they can all be crushed and they're all nutritious. So the whole goat, we can crush it and nothing we can throw away. But in my country, or in the Duke's country, <laughs> we have not even talked about those other things. Mm. We are even just talking <clears throat> about meat, mm. not even offers. Mm. You get it? Mm. So we still have a lot that we need to cover. We need to think for ourselves, not only you, because I see Duke, many people follow you from all over the world. Africa, I want you to understand this concept very, very well. Take it to be a serious concept. There is a lot we have not tapped. Two, the other market that we have, Duke, I want you to understand this. Mm. I have many farmers that have accumulated. We are doing, we have the same vision. We are going to accumulate many animals and mostly hybrids. Because we are poor, we need money. Mm. A rich man is the person who will do local goats and he doesn't mind he doesn't care when. how long it takes. Uh -huh. After all, he has the money. You get but it? But if you're a serious business person who wants to get something out of it, you don't need to think the way you're talking about. You get it? Mm. I, me, every day I elapse in my life. I need to know how many animals are served at my farm. Mm -hmm. I need to know how many kids I'm supposed to get. So you can't tell me to reserve. I love local animals so much because I'm also a local guy here. But when I look at the financial line, I'm not making dollars. Mm. I cannot keep an animal for three years to give me 150. That needs government. That needs rich people, <laughs> rich people. who really need to see the color of black or mm. the color of brown. Me, I'm not looking at the color. I'm looking at the That's finance. True. Because at the end of it all, I need dollars on the table. Okay. So some other markets that we have not handled, I want Duke to find out this. Mm. I don't know whether you'll have time. I want you to go to the supermarkets mm. and tell me which supermarket packs goat's meat. Wow. We almost don't have it. Mm. Tuskies used to cook mm. and put it there. It's no longer there. 
Two, it's also another market. Like the way you see people doing pork, mm. people do chicken, mm. people Rabbit, do beef. Whatever. Mm. We also need to have those outlets. Sausage. Yes, mm. sausages. Where do you get the good sausage? I haven't eaten. Is it any. haram? Is it bad <laughs> that people can't eat it? I haven't eaten any. But why don't we tackle <coughs> into that? That's mm. also another market. Mm. So be after that, I will have a number of farmers. Uh, we shall have grades of the animals. Mm. Those that have not performed well, though they are hybrids, mm. we shall turn them into a roasting point. Mm. Sorry, um, a slaughter uh, a point. We slaughter the animals. We pack. Take them to the supermarkets. You get it? Mm. And where we are going, me, I'm not stopping here. I'm thinking about of having a cooler, a mobile abattoir. Mm -hmm. We shall get the license from the government. Then they give you us the halal. And then you move. You move around Tens, as people buy. You're a farmer. Mm. You don't need to go around looking for who should buy your animals. Mm, true. We only need to inform you that we need Wave this step. amount of meat. Mm. Then we send you a slaughterhouse, mm. so a slaughter car, mobile abattoir, mm. comes to your farm, give us the number of animals that you have, mm. we slaughter them there, mm. we pack them, we weigh the, the kilos that you have produced, you are paid there and then. Mm. That is oh. the step that I want to go on. Wow. I want to leave you with one other thing. Why do you think that uh, cafe javas consumes a lot of meat, beef, fish, then chicken, mm. why doesn't he have goat's, goat's meat? meat. That, is, that is a question for you. I want you to find out. I want you people to demand him. Mm. Find out that reason why Cafe Javas is not doing goat's meat. You find that there is a missing link mm. that is supposed to be filled up by you or even me. You get it? Mm. So talking about the viability of goat's meat, I really have no idea. I have no answer for you. You already have it yourself. Perfect. Yes. yes. Let's talk about um, natural synchronization. I've heard you talk about it, but I've never understood it. And probably somebody else out there may not have understood it as well. Synchronization, first of all, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a broad word. But right now we are talking about uh, estrus, synchronizing for estrus or for breeding. Breeding means serving an animal. So when we talk about natural synchronization, we are talking about playing with hormones of an animal such that they come in a group. You play with the timing of an animal, also <coughs> playing with its hormones. Because when you're talking about breeding, you're talking about science of really a, um, um, an animal, of really an animal coming on heat. So if we are doing natural synchronization, this is what we are talking about. Me, I don't use hormones as per now. I use hormones in cows. But in goats, I don't use hormones. What do I do? I get my male. I remove it from the flock because me in every flock of mine, I always put over four males or three males or two males, depending on the mothers I'm targeting. If I'm targeting over 200, I have to put four males. If I'm targeting 100 males, I'm, I put two males. So one male serves over 50 females. So what I do, let's say now I pull out the male. I take it to the male unit. Do you know what will happen? If these animals are feeding well and they are really doing very well, the body will get satisfied and it comes on heat. For your information, some of you people take animals and you put them on the less nutritious grasses or feeds or conditions. And that animal fails to come on heat. They might not be uh, feeding well, first of all, or they are not in a good condition that is making them satisfied. You know, when we are dealing with breeding, we deal with love. If an animal is not getting love, it will not come on heat. And for your information, animals only breed when an animal is on heat, they're not like you, human beings. You want to breed all throughout. Mm. So, in this case, feed the animals very well, remove the male. After removing the male, let them continue feeding very well. So, after removing the male, these animals will continue coming on heat. So, the moment you also depend on which period you want to receive babies. Let's say if I want to receive babies, um, from uh, January, February to March, for my reasons. Because sometimes 
um, if we produce kids in a dry spell, we don't get a lot of infections. If, if we produce kids in a rainy season, there is a lot of infections that attacks us. So we fight with a lot of diseases, diarrhea, off, and so on. But if you produce them in a dry spell, you will not have much diarrhea, you will not have off, you get it. Mm. So that means if I want to produce kids, let's say in January, I have to introduce, I have to count five months backward. And say if January, so I have to count December, November, November October, October uh, September, then September, and then August. Then August. So that means my animals are supposed to breed from June. Oh, from June. That's when you introduce the male. Uh -huh. You introduce the male in June. Mm -hmm. It will be there July, August. At least those three months, you're uh -huh. sure that uh -huh. they're going to... to August, breed. actually, maximum September. Mm. Reason being, they will start producing January, mm. February, March. Okay. April, the rain is coming up. So, when I bring in that male, mm. let's say June, that hormone, that smell called testosterone hormone, mm. it's the one that is going to smell mm. in the flock and all women will understand that the man is in. So, they will go so their brain it. will start stimulating hormones like, you know, Gainerage, PGF2 alpha, uh, they will stimulate a lot of hormones because we have a lot of reproductive hormones like Gainerage, we also have LH, FSH, then uh, um, 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 Cooper Solutium, um, sorry, progesterone hormone, those are all hormones that can come in the system. Then mm -hmm. finally, we get what they call uh, PGF2 alpha or Istramet. Okay. You get it. So they start to come whenever they think about it. They start coming. They start coming all throughout. So the, the, those hormones will start to work. Then finally, all animals will come on heat. So we shall target which kind of animals. Those, with, um, those that have had just left heat, mm. they will come back later. Okay. Those that left heat earlier, they will come back faster. And that animal will, um, will serve. Will first serve the first lot mm. that came earlier. Mm. Then the second lot, that is the second month, that also came on heat the second time. And the last ones that came on heat in the last time. So that means we shall have a breeding period of three months. And we shall have kids in three months breeding period. Sorry, delivering period. Okay. Let's say from January, February, and, and March. March. Because the father served from June, July, August. August. Then September, lately. That means we shall have kids from January, February, March, March, and late, late April. April. So that is what they call natural synchronization. Okay. It has advantages. And disadvantages. And disadvantages are minimal, mm. but the advantages are more. Why? Mm. Because since we have, um, we, you, you group up your farm and also team up your animals. Because if you want to sell, let's say, a group of animals, mm. you have the animals produced in the same period. You get it? Ah, so, so you that helps us wait. Uh -uh. Again, you sell in January. Then uh -uh. you wait. Uh -uh. Again, you sell in December. Yes. At so you will you have groups. Yourself. Hey. You have groups. And two, on top of that, the animals will be uniform in the age. And when you're getting your money, you'll get it in bulk. Mm -hmm. Duke, you can never get rich if you don't get money in bulk. And True. you're getting randomly. Mm -hmm. Two, it also helps your workers if they are managing their animals, the mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. they know because that kids, the batch is uh -huh, there. It's coming. Mm -hmm. Then fixing your worker to go in every flock, picking mm -hmm. one, one goat. One, 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 It's a bit tiresome. It's tiresome, very tiresome. True. It's better mm -hmm. they are born in the same uh, group. Mm -hmm. You say that from this month to this month, we are receiving babies. Then you can even put extra power in that flock to... Uh, help that guy to manage the kids so you will have no issues with mortalities and so on okay. because kids are cared for does the natural synchronization um, happen with all breeds or a specific set of breeds no 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 all mm. breeds whether the, local or whether local, local or not mm. the only problem with locals mm. they will take long to start to work on your pace because they have different maturity time on uh, and a different breeding period mm. because you don't understand them one is converting high mm. one is converting less you know they will be disorganized but the moment they produce for the first time mm. the rest of the times it will be <coughs> very very easy okay for them to be synchronized as long as you provide feeds for them
talking about natural synchronization, how do I tell that a goat is pregnant? For example, in my rabbit business, we do what we call palpating, like where we touch the belly, and you know, within three or four weeks, you can tell that, oh, actually this rabbit is pregnant. Do yep. you do the same with? We can as well do palpation. Oh. We do palpation in cows, mm -hmm. but for them we do rectal palpation. Where you I put, put it, the hand? I put in my hand through the rectum mm -hmm. to palpate and feel what is down. Whoa. But with goats, the organs are small. Mm -hmm. We cannot do rectal palpation. We can either do um, stomach palpation. Yes, physically here. Yeah, if the pregnancy is in, uh, let's say, at the end of the first trimester, okay. let's say three months or four, you get it? Mm -hmm. So, but also there is also a scanner that you can use. Oh. A, that, but basically like me, and what I use there are like here. signs, um, maybe bo change in body size? Of course the change in body size can be, mm. but you know, goats are very tricky. Yeah, it there is some which are too <laughs> big and you know, mm. they are not pregnant. Mm. You get it? And even those animals that don't even produce are always looking big and nice. You get it? But, um, the body size, of course, it will change. We show you the vulva can enlarge. Mm -hmm. That's about to be delivered. Even the weight moves. It's, it's like even human beings, even the uh, palpitations uh, will, will also change. Okay. It will be having a, a high heart rate ah. beats. Yes. But if you can see, you can even check on the jugular vein. Then you check for the, for the pulse, for the pulses. Okay. So... That is how we, we, we can maybe tell. But basically for me what I do, I put in animals, let's say 100, and I put two males at the end of six months. I, I see most of them producing. Many people have, yes. the ones that I've actually interacted with, complain that um, they lose kids a lot. Could you be knowing why, some of the reasons as to why those kids could probably be, uh, could die? while they are still young? Um, me, I don't lose kids here. If I produce over 400 kids, I can lose like four. And you raise that's the, accidental. The mm. That's accidental that it can happen. Mm. But some of the things that really kills kids, mm. one, people fail to spray kids. I don't know who specialists and tells you that the kids are not sprayed. Or they are not even sprayed with the concentration of the old ones. Because a tick cannot say that this is a kid, I will not bite it. At the moment it bites it, it is transferring the disease strictly to the kids which are weak. A kid is still getting the immunity from the milk of the mother. If you don't protect it so much, it is not going to even survive like what, how the old one can survive. The possible causes of kids or the possible causes of mortalities in kids, one, mismanagement of the kids. What are the mismanagements? You don't separate kids to sleep in the kids' unit, mm. which is very dangerous. The kids are supposed to be separated. Why? Because they are weak. Goats are not like human beings. Human beings, if you see rain coming, you always uh, put the, uh, you, you, you carry your kids and take them in the house, which is not the case like the, 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 uh, the animals. The animals, when the animals, the rain comes, the animal is only thinking about itself. It will run and remember we keep many in the flock. If we keep many in the flock, they will only run, then go in the goat's house. <laughs> Even the kids will also be running to the house. And what will happen? They will definitely stamp on them and then will kill them. That is one of the reasons. Two, people fail to boost those kids with uh, multivitamins. Me at my farm, we give kids multivitamin on a weekly basis. Sometimes we even give them iron. Two, we deworm those kids every after two weeks. Because when you, the kids are born, this week they are in the house, the second week they start to go out and start feeding, you know, on the ground, uh, you know, pastures, which are near the house. So they are picking worms. So after like two weeks or three weeks, start to deworm. At least give them the, some soft dewormers. Such that in case they tap or they get the worms, or of course they have to get the worms. Because worms always get closer to the houses. Why? Because there is always a lot of uh, goats there. They always smell and know the direction of the animals. They get closer to the houses. That's why we always tell people, don't allow 
grasses around the houses because grasses around the houses are habitats of worms. So, but if your house is clean and there is no grass around it, the worms will not come. And that's why we always release kids after like midday or even in the evening. Why? Because the worms should have feared the sunshine and then they go down. Mm. So the kids will not have opportunity of feeding <coughs> on the worms. Mm. But the moment you allow the grass to grow <coughs> around your house, you're bringing the, uh, the worms closer. If you're bringing the worms closer, it's going to affect you directly because your goats are going to be fed on worms all the time. So they will be sickly over the worms that you brought closer. Okay. We, we, there there <coughs> has been, take for example, a mother has given birth and she can't probably breastfeed. How can I supplement that, that kid? Yeah, we always have, me, I have some cows here, though I don't mention about them. Mm. I have a certain number. I think I have around 50 of them, but I don't mind about them. Why? Because they are not of the good breed that I want. Okay. It's not a good breed that I would tell people to learn and mm. maybe do. So I always keep them so that they can supplement me with some milk. But when you get that milk, cook it because it's ununiform milk mm. from different cows. You cook like uh, the way you cook the normal milk for yeah, a yeah. person? But don't put tea leaves. <laughs> And don't put sugar. She don't put sugar. So <laughs> let it be natural. Please take that note. Yes, you mm. get, and it's not good to dilute it. You don't dilute it. Yeah, cook it, mm. then let it be at a room temperature. Okay. So when it's on room temperature, mm. give it to the kids. But make sure you, that your hygiene is highly good. Okay. Because you have to clean those, um, the, the nipples mm. that you're feeding those kids with, or maybe the troughs. Mm. If you don't do that, the kids is going to be vulnerable to many diseases okay. because of your negligence of hygiene. Anthology. Actually, kids that suckle always get issues with diseases. Why? Mm. Because of the hygiene of those people that are handling. Mm. So that is what you're supposed to do. Give them that milk. They'll grow and they'll and come up. And their milk on sale, like concert, like already like powdered milk where I can just go there and buy and then mix and give? You can, of course, okay. even the nun, mm. it can really do. Mm. And um, yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So and it's very, very, very And easy. also, just in case I want to probably, um, I want to see my chi -chi kid or kid grow very healthy, I can still supplement even when it's still breastfeeding? Yeah, 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 yeah you can. Mm. But the problem is mm. you're going to confuse the digestive, this system. digestive system. Which, which milk, ah. the other mothers ah. or this... <laughs> you get, mm. and that will be crisscrossing, you know, mm. uh, changing of the milk. It might cause diarrhea, okay. and that diarrhea is one of the causes of, of death of, child, of those of kids. Kids' mortality. Yes, <clears throat> actually, what mostly kills these animals mm. is the uh, diarrhea. Okay, and it's always a result of poor hygiene, hygiene. and. Um, people neglect if they see an animal diarrheating today, they want to handle it tomorrow. That is late. If you see it today, give it Genta today and Oxy today. Okay. Or give it sulfur drugs today or Aeroflox or Interflox today, immediately. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until tomorrow. Wow. Be observant. Whichever diarrhea you see in, an, in a kid, mm. it is not good at all. Okay. And don't wait. Okay. Yes. Let's talk about um, natural synchronization. I've heard you talk about it, but I've never understood it. And probably somebody else out there may not have understood it as well. Synchronization, first of all, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a broad word. But right now we are talking about uh, estrus, synchronizing for estrus or for breeding. Breeding means serving an animal. So when we talk about natural synchronization, we are talking about playing with hormones of an animal such that they come in a group. You play with the timing of an animal, also <coughs> playing with its hormones. Because when you're talking about breeding, you're talking about science of really uh, um, um, an animal, of really an animal coming on heat. So if we are doing natural synchronization, this is what we are talking about. Me, I don't use hormones as per now. I use hormones in cows. But in goats, I don't use hormones. What do I do? I get my male... I remove it from the flock because me in every flock of mine I always put over four males or three males or two males depending 
on the mothers I'm targeting. If I'm targeting over 200, I have to put four males. If I'm targeting 100 males, I'm, I put two males. So one male serves over 50 females. So what I do, let's say now I pull out the male. I take it to the male unit. Do you know what will happen? If these animals are feeding well and they are really doing very well, the body will get satisfied and it comes on heat. For your information, some of you people take animals and you put them on the less nutritious grasses or feeds or conditions. And that animal fails to come on heat. They might not be uh, feeding well, first of all, or they are not in a good condition that is making them satisfied. You know, when we are dealing with breeding, we deal with love. If an animal is not getting love, it will not come on heat. And for your information, animals only breed when an animal is on heat. They're not like you, human beings. <laughs> you want to breed all throughout. Mm. So, in this case, feed the animals very well. Remove the male. After removing the male, let them continue feeding very well. So, after removing the male, these animals will continue coming on heat. So, the moment you also depend on which period you want to receive babies. Let's say if I want to receive babies um, from uh, January, February to March, for my reasons. Because sometimes, um, if we produce kids in a dry spell, we don't get a lot of infections. If, if we produce kids in a rainy season, there is a lot of infections that attacks us. So we fight with a lot of diseases, diarrheas, off, and so on. But if you produce them in a dry spell, you will not have much diarrhea, you will not have off, you get it. Mm. So that means if I want to produce kids, let's say in January, I have to introduce, I have to count five months backwards. And say if January, so I have to count December, November, November October, October uh, September, then September, and then August. Then August. So that means my animals are supposed to breed from June. Oh, from June. That's you when it. you introduce the male. Uh huh. You introduce the male in June. Mm -hmm. It will be there July, August. At least those three months, you are uh -huh. sure that uh -huh. they are going to. to August breed. actually maximum September. Mm. Reason being, they will start producing January, mm. February, March. Okay. April, the rain is coming up. So, when I bring in that male, mm. let's say in June, that hormone, that smell called testosterone hormone, mm. is the one that is going to smell mm. in the flock and all women will understand that the man is in. So, they will go so their it. brain will start stimulating hormones like, you know, gainer rage, PGF2 alpha, they will stimulate a lot of hormones because we have a lot of reproductive hormones like GnRH. We also have LH, FSH, then uh, um, 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 Cooper Solutium, um, sorry, progesterone hormone. Those are all hormones that can come in the system. Then mm -hmm. finally, we get what they call uh, PGF2 alpha or Istramet. Okay. You get it. So they start to come whenever they think about it. They start coming, they start coming all throughout. So the, the, those hormones will start to work, then finally all animals will come on heat. So we shall target which kind of animals. Those, with, um, those that have, had just left heat, mm. they will come back later. Okay. Those that left heat earlier, they will come back faster. And that animal will, um, will serve we'll first serve the first lot mm. that came earlier mm. then the second lot that is the second month that also came on heat the second time and the last ones that came on heat in the last time so that means we shall have a breeding period of three months and we shall have kids in three months breeding period sorry delivering period okay let's say from january february and, and march. march because the father served from june july august, august. then september lately that means we shall have kids from January, February, March, March and late, late April. April. So that is what they call natural synchronization. Okay. It has advantages and disadvantages. And disad disadvantages are minimal, mm. but the advantages are more. Why? Mm. Because since we have, um, we, you, you group up your farm and also team up your animals. Because if you want to sell, let's say, a group of animals, mm. you have the animals produced in the same period. 
You get it? Ah, so so you that helps us wait. Uh -huh. Again, you sell in January. Then uh -huh. you wait. Uh -huh. Again, you sell in December. Yes. At so you will you have groups. Yourself. Hey. You have groups. And two, on top of that, the animals will be uniform in the age. And when you're getting your money, you'll get it in bulk. Mm -hmm. Duke, you can never get rich if mm -hmm. you don't get money in bulk. And True. you're getting randomly. Two, it also helps your workers if they are managing their animals, the mm. kids. Mm, they know because that kids, the batch is uh -huh, there. It's coming. Mm. Then fixing your worker to go in every flock, picking one, one goat. One, one, one. It's a bit tiresome. It's tiresome, very tiresome. True. It's better mm. they are born in the same uh, group. Mm. You say that from this month to this month, we are receiving babies. Then you can even put extra power in that flock to... Uh, help that guy to manage the kids so you will have no issues with mortalities and so on okay. because kids are cared for does the natural synchronization um, happen with all breeds or a specific set of breeds no 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 all mm. breeds whether the, local or whether local or not mm. the only problem with locals mm. they will take long to start to work on your pace because they have different maturity time on uh, and a different breeding period mm. because you don't understand them one is converting high mm. one is converting less you know they will be disorganized but the moment they produce for the first time mm. the rest of the times it will <coughs> be very very easy okay for them to be synchronized as long as you provide feeds for them talking about natural synchronization how do i tell that a goat is pregnant for example, in my rabbit business, we do what we call palpating, like where we touch the belly, and you know, within three or four weeks, you can tell that, oh, actually this rabbit is pregnant. Do yep. you do the same with... We can as well do palpation. Oh. We do palpation in cows, mm -hmm. but for them, we do rectal palpation. Where you I put, put it, the hand? I put in my hand through the rectum mm -hmm. to palpate and feel what is down. Whoa. But with goats, the organs are small. Mm -hmm. We cannot do rectal palpation. We can either do um, stomach palpation. Yes, physically here. Yeah. yeah, if the pregnancy is in, uh, let's say, at the end of the first trimester, okay. let's say three months or four, you get it. Mm -hmm. So, but also there is also a scanner that you can use. Oh. A, that, but basically like me, and what I use are like here. signs, sim um, maybe bo change in body size. Of course, the change in body size can be, mm. but you know, goats are very tricky. Yeah, it there is be some which are too <laughs> big and you know, mm. they are not pregnant. Mm. You get it? And even those animals that don't even produce are always looking big and nice. You get it? But um, the body size, of course, it will change. We we'll show you the vulva can enlarge. Mm. That's about to be delivered. Even the weight moves. It's, it's like even human beings, even the uh, palpitations uh, will, will also change. Okay. It will be having a, a high heart rate ah. beats. Yes. But if you can see, you can even check on the jugular vein. Then you check for the, for the pulse, for the pulses. Okay. So that is how we, we, we can maybe tell. But basically for me, what I do, I put in animals, let's say 100, and I put two males. At the end of six months, I'll, I see most of them producing. Okay. This is a story that amazed me, and that's what we're going to talk about in this particular video. But don't forget, I have a series of different videos, particularly from this gentleman. So keep checking my channel. We want to know the transition. How and when and why do you transition from being just uh, an artificial inseminator, technical person or technician, whatever it is, to now a goat breeder you're not just a, a mere farmer you're a breeder yeah. who has been there done this several yeah. years when do you say enough is enough or when do you transition yeah actually i was also a worker like other people so i used to work in Zimbabwe. i used to breed the animals at uh, 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 sembeguya estates so i was the general breeder for cows so but there was a project r that was running in that farm and um, there was a project going on for goats so i also joined the project um, and i started doing the treatment you know monitoring of the projects but in the process of doing monitoring of the project i saw many farmers because we could give animals to the farmers so we did that and uh, actually it worked as a trigger for me to think about of uh, goat farming 
and think of really leaving my job. What made me do that? It was some farmers that we really visited that have never even gone to school. Their number rose to um, 100 goats. Their number rose to 500 goats. Me adding up some calculations, I found out that these farmers are getting a lot of money. Because we found them with bikes, mm. um, with the motorcycles, those were the rich. Mm. You know, he's showing you a number of animals. He's showing you that I bought this land. So that really um, complicated my head. So I thought about it. I told my friend I used to work with that, you know what? I have to be a farmer, a good farmer. And uh, I decided to start buying land from my salary. Here, I started with around uh, five acres. Then I added on another four acres. Then I, I started. So I mobilized the animals. Uh, we used to give them to the farmers. In my area, you buy two, three, five. Then you give them to the uh, farmers because the farmers wanted us close. That's why they gave us land to start mobilizing our goats. So when I made 100, I said, let me go. So I moved. I, I came here with 100 goats, but of course they were hybrids. And um, I also uh, had two males. I bought two males, which were pure. And then I brought them here. So I started here with 100 goats. Another thing that I did not tell you, gentlemen, we are going to continue with his conversation, is that Mr. Hamisi Semanda has a very thriving YouTube channel. Please go there, uh, as you can see in this particular picture on the screen. That's his YouTube channel. He uploads very nice content in regards to goat farming, how to manage goats, and how to do literally everything. Let's continue with the discussion. How was your start? Was it a good one? Was, did you face any challenges in your start? Uh, the truth is, I think the challenges I went through, those are the challenges that always, you know, scare people mm. to leave their jobs and so on. Me, when I was leaving my job, I didn't even tell my father because I was the last born of my father. And, you know, he loved me so much. I, I couldn't tell him that, Muse, you know what? I'm leaving job to go and do good farming. But I came here, I think on my account, I had around two millions or three. Mm -hmm. I had no house here. Uh, I only made a toilet, and that toilet was uh, a mud toilet, not even blocks. I got transport. I carried my animals from Zimbabwe because that's where uh, the, the they were. Mm. So we reached here. I got uh, a manager and um, another one worker. So I brought them here. Uh, my manager was sleeping in a, in a, in a yeah. tent. Oh. I bought a tent, and I was too devoted because I knew that I would get money out of it. After all, the other farmers, the other side, they didn't know anything about animal health and anything, but they could achieve all that. So because I said, of your help, because of my help, mm. because I was the brain, you know, animals get issues, what, what, you drive and got their bikes and everything. So I was quite sure that I can uh, really achieve. So my manager used to sleep under the tent. I had no money, but still I had many people that could call me to go and help them on their farms, you know, because they knew me, I could go do breeding, uh, construction of the farms. I could get some little money still, mm. like maybe 200,000, uh, you know, like that. I could get some money to eat. Mm -hmm. Then, um, animals also continued to rip, uh, uh, multiplying. And um, the first lot, uh, that is after like seven months, I received uh, 170 kids. Because, you know, in my selection, I selected many animals and uh, they were all very nice animals, super nice hybrids because I knew what I wanted and I could get it from the project from my uh, outgrowers. So my animals, the first lot, they produced 170 kids out of 100. And you know, I was very attentive because every after a week, even in the middle of the week, I could drive and come here. Because that was my last resort. I couldn't want to go back to, you know, search for a job. Mm. So what we did... Which year was that meanwhile? That is, uh, was it 2009? Okay. Uh, 2009 there, because now it's four years. This farm has made four years this year mm. in August. So that's about 2019? That's, yeah, yeah, that's 2019. Okay. Could be there. Okay. Yeah, I think that was 2019. So um, what we did... Um, 
we produced those kids and I told my manager we have to be very, very attentive. So we concentrated more and we managed the animals more mm. such that we don't lose. And actually, for your information, we only lost like all two kids and they were oppressed in the mother's section. And, you know, their immunity lowered and they died. So that is how it happened. And I lost two kids. So, my, because we had a lot of grass here, and the goats were really very nice. My goats got bred after like over one month or one and a half. Then after another six months, actually there were five months and something, I received another 200 kids. Then I said yes. Now the houses, I had to adjust because I'd increased the number. And remember when I was starting, I started like a small house because I had a small number of animals. Now the guy came here and he bought, um, actually he bought... Uh, uh, was it 300 goats? He was from Western Uganda, actually he was taking them to Rwanda. Mm. He bought 300 <coughs> nannies. Some were eight months, some were nine, some were uh, five months. So we combined all of them. That was in one and a half months. Sorry, one and a half yes. years. Mm -hmm. So I sold 300 kids and I got 120 millions. That was my first big man on the account. I came back here and... Uh, started building the houses i built for a manager i built for his assistant and also built on the other house mm. and built the winner's section actually the male section yes. i also built it i also built the female winner's section and i stayed with money then there is a, a farmer who sold me a whole farm he said i missy i'm also going to buy land buy all my animals so i went and paid him on average actually I bought around over 300, uh, there were around 400 goats. But of course, they were not all old. Mm. So he only costed me the big old goats. Mm. And uh, these kids, he never minded about them. So I brought all the animals here, around 400 of them. So the money I got, I reinvested it into the project. And then it started producing more. So since then, my account started being happy. Because now the animals increased. I left with some dollars on my account. So I started living a better life. Since then, those animals produced and then uh, many people started coming and picking more goats. So in my mind, I got to understand that I don't have to have hard cash. My money is supposed to be in animals. And now I even have it in my mind that every money I have, it is supposed to be a living money. What an inspiring, interesting story that is. So um, as we wind up that particular segment of how you transition from here to there, uh, do you, did you at one time regret leaving your job for this? No, actually, I never regretted because I was too devoted. Mm. I did want to go back to that job, but I also wanted to live a better life. You know me, I'm a hustler. Mm -hmm. Even when I was, uh, when I was at my workplace, uh, and what I want your followers to understand is that uh, uh, if you want to achieve or to be somewhere, don't say that I can't do this job. Be vigorous. Me, when I used to be at my, my workplace, I was a driver, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, a, a, a technician, I was uh, a, a medical person, I was everything mm. because me, I could even, actually I was even a marketeer. Mm. So I used to do a lot of things. I used to do a lot of things. So I never regretted to go back. Why? Because when I came here, um, I had freedom, you know, those calls because me, I used to stay in Zimbabwe, mm. but on my way back home, they could call me Hamisi. You have you auditors. Have mm. Then I could turn from there and then. So um, you literally had no control over yourself. No, 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 no. You were always on like on a remote. Choop. That's it. Shh. Shh. So I could come to my home mm. in midnight and then early morning I'm leaving. Sometimes I could even spend three months without going home. Without going <coughs> home. Wow. You get it? So that was the thing. So when I decided and say, let me leave, whichever I have, mm. I will be with what I can. Okay. So I never regretted to go back. I just said, let me move mm. forward okay. and my own. As you wind up, somebody who is, you know, having thoughts of either they should leave, they shouldn't leave. When should I leave? 
how should I live? What advice do you give, do you give them? The truth is, you've seen even my beginning was all about having capital. I can't lie to you or advise you that you leave the job when you have no capital. My plan or my advice or my everything is get the money. You know, if you get the money whenever you get it from maybe from your work, make sure that you invest that money before you think about of going. Why? Because there is some challenges that we meet on the way. You get it? If me, I had no simple backup of maybe going back to the fields, mm. get some Getting little some money that could there. make me go there and there, mm. you would find that Hamis would be selling some of the animals I brought to survive. You get it? My advice to the people that wants to leave the jobs, you can never be rich if you're still working under someone. You'll be an average person. An average person having a home, having kids at school, you have a car to drive and fuel. That's it. But that doesn't mean that you're rich. And you're not even counted, not even close to people who are rich. If you want to be rich, what you have to do, one, mobilize your capital. Invest your money before you leave the job. Get all the challenges when you're still at the job. Mm. Because the money you put in, if you make a mistake, it will vanish. If that money vanishes, you have somewhere you can starve and pick more. Mm -hmm. Then you add in. So my advice is start investing on the little money that you have. Mm -hmm. When your project stands and it can support you, then you can don't go. turn, okay. but just move forward and go. Okay. Because you're going towards your happiness. Interesting. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Hamis Samanda for speaking to Dennis Duke of Uganda. Yes. And thank you so much, our lovely viewers, for always watching and always supporting us. If you want to give me some money, this is the number. If you want to give him some money, the number is in the comment section, or it may not actually be money, but any way uh, you want to communicate with them, it could be um, technical advice or something, or you want to ask about a question that you probably did not understand, please reach us on to those numbers, and we will be definitely answering your questions. My name is Dennis Duke Onyala. I remind you, don't forget to go to Songura House and eat some good rabbit meat. Very soon, we shall be launching, what is it going to be called? Ham Grill. Ham Grill. Ham Garden and Grill. It's Ham already Garden on and Grill. Uh, it's on the way. It's it, in Kayunga. Yeah. How long should we wait? No, I, I wanted to open it this December. Ah, okay. So It's already on the Google map. Oh, okay. You can even check about I, it. I want to know when we are coming to eat the meat. Yeah, actually that will be in December, possibly. That's what I'm trying I'll to do. I'll cover that with. story as well and you'll most definitely getting to, uh, be getting to know where that is located, where you can go and eat goat meat. Until then, ciao. Bye-bye.